so I'm, I talked about the uh, censorship of um, Pittsburgh journalist, uh, Pittsburgh journalist Alexis Johnson. And I also read the response from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette who censored this black journalist from covering protests. Uh, that was a fun thing that happened in my city. So we're going to do a follow-up. We're going to read this follow-up article that just came out the other day and uh, kind of follow up on that story we talked about from Friday. Uh, there is no audio on this, which is good. It's just going to be me kind of reading through. So this is Keith Burris right here. Keith Burris and Donald Trump. Uh, Keith Burris is, is the guy that wrote the response saying that they didn't do it based on race. Even though there was a black journalist, there was a black photographer, and a bunch of other journalists that were covering protests, barred from covering protests. They were just like, we're not doing it anymore. And, uh, and basically, they switched the, um, switched the articles. Uh, they, they edited the articles. They changed the photo from like photos of the protests to show how large it was to copaganda of those cops kneeling and you know showing their solidarity and then turning around and pepper spraying all the fucking protesters, right? So that's what they were showing. And, uh, and then this photo comes out that's been, that's been floating around from 2016. So this is Keith Burris, the guy that wrote the response saying, I'm not racist. Sure, a bunch of black journalists were censored from covering uh, you know, protests about one of the largest civil rights movements in the last decade. But that's just because of journalistic objectivism. Uh, yeah, him and fucking Jeremy Wales can go hang out and, you know, jack each other off to, while reading fucking Fountainhead to each other. Uh, so, uh, in 20, so let's read the article. In 2016, Pittsburgh Post Gazette publisher and then editor in chief John Robinson uh, Block was photographed on a private plane uh, with presidential candidate Donald Trump. The then photograph was shared with the Pittsburgh City paper by a source who took a screenshot from Block's Facebook page with the caption In 39 years of full time journalism, I've met many interesting people. This was more than memorable. In the photo, both men are smiling and thumbs give, uh, Trump is giving a thumbs up to the camera. The photo circulated widely on social media throughout the city, with some claiming uh, that it showed the head of Pittsburgh's largest newspaper favoring Trump. Uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette, by the way, is not the conservative paper in Pittsburgh. I mentioned that on Friday. It, it's worth mentioning again. They are somewhat they are somewhat center left, I would say. They're more neoliberal, but I think they're center left. Uh, because, but what didn't circulate widely in Pittsburgh at the time was that Keith Burris, the then the Toledo Blade editorial page editor was also on the plane with Trump and Block. Today, Burris is the executive editor of the Post Gazette, in addition to being the director of the opinion pages of both newspapers. Uh, and a photo on occasion shared with City Paper earlier by an anonymous source. Okay, so why is this significant today? Uh, so this was the same day. Okay, so this came out later in the day. Uh, Burris posted a non-apologetic response in recent controversies surrounding the Post-Gazette in a column titled Truth, Fairness, in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, and he writes, we will not apologize for upholding professional standards in journalism or attempting to eliminate bias. That's his claim, but it's very clear that like you, you don't want to cover protests and you chose a photo of propaganda instead of showing like what the protests actually were and then you change the article and there's proof of that happening as well that we that we talked about on friday um so again if you didn't if you didn't i would go check out that video after this if you have time if not do it later whenever you want to um that claim of eliminating bias was the decision made by management uh, that sent the Post-Gazette newsroom in turmoil. Management, like Burris, removed Alexis Johnson, a black reporter, from protest coverage last week after claiming she showed bias because of a tweet below, right? And she basically shows, uh, she, she makes a joke that it's, oh, it's looters that don't care about the city, but then it's like, oh, wait, they're just from the Kenny Chesney concert. Uh-oh, right? It's like, you can see all the, and this is like a yearly fucking event. Every year, the fucking Ches Knights show up and, and they're just like, we're going to, we're going to rock out with your cocks out. And then they fucking trash the city. Uh, and no one says anything. And everybody's like, Oh, good times, huh? Locker room talk. Okay. Um, since then, Michael Santiago, a black photographer at PG was also removed from documenting protests. Two published stories were pulled from the PG website and dozen of other union union journalists have uh, been conflicted out of coverage uh, after showing support. So basically anybody that showed support um, 
uh, Lauren Lee, Ashley Murray were the two that we talked about on Friday, uh, had their articles changed, their photos changed, uh, which means that the photographer, the photographers don't get credit or paid for, for those photos as well. So uh, basically claiming more than 80 journalists on staff were too biased to cover one of the biggest civil rights movements of the modern era. Again, why is the Trump photo so uh, significant? Because when you're calling out a staff member for bias without explaining what her what exactly her bias is, it's important to look in the mirror. Yeah, he doesn't really claim what his bias was. Um, it was under Burris that longtime editorial cartoonist Rob Rogers was fired for what Rogers said were critical cartoons of President Donald Trump. Uh, Rogers was replaced by cartoonist Steve Kelly, who received criticism for drawing three sexist cartoons in one week. I do remember that. Uh, I've known Rob Rogers. I, Rob Rogers is one of the first people that, uh, when I was in seventh grade, encouraged me to like continue pursuing a, a career in art. And then I got to meet him as an adult. Um, and he's a super nice, super cool dude. Uh, don't always agree with the politics, but that's okay. You are allowed to disagree with your, the people that you like. You're allowed to disagree with them as long as you can have civil discourse with them. Uh, so as we continue, Burris is also the author, uh, author of the now famous 2018 editorial Reason as Racism, which was published on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, claiming that calling someone a racist is the new McCarthyism. False. Uh, calling someone racist is calling someone racist. Uh, McCarthyism still exists today, uh, despite the fact that we've numerously times over and over again proved that Russiagate is a bullshit narrative. Um, uh, calling someone racist is not the new McCarthyism. That's like that's literally like what they do with the Black Lives Matter movement, by the way, is that they say that this is Russian inter interference. Like they're like, oh, the Russians are making this happen. It's like, that's all fucking bullshit. Huh. Okay, the editorial acted as a defense of Trump since the president said racist statements when calling immigrants from Haiti and African nations as coming from shithole countries. So he's just like, oh, but, you know, maybe we should just say that anyway. This is uh, from the article. If the president had used the word hellhole instead, would that have been racist? Yes. Uh, if he would have used the word failed states, would that have been racist? No, but why are they failed states? Were they failed states because of American interventionism? The word failed state has a lot of different meanings, so you can't just throw the word failed state around. America could be considered a failed state because of all the things that are happening right now, and I think the protests are proof of that, but you don't want to cover the fact that America is a failed state via the protests because you are a biased dickhead. Okay, uh, but these nations... Uh, there are nations that are hellholes in this world, and there are failed states. America, uh, <laughs> it's not racist to say that this country cannot take only the worst people from the worst places, and that we want some of the best people from the best places, many of which are inhabited by people of color. That's not racism, it is reason. That's not what he said, uh, and that's also not reason. Uh, you should be helping people. Is especially when you create the refugee crisis, you should be taking in Syrian refugees, considering you're one of the reasons why that fucking war exists in that place anyway. You should be taking Yemeni refugees, because America is the reason why that war exists anyway. You should be existing Venezuelan refugees, considering you're waging an economic war in Venezuela right now that's creating a, a, a crisis of poverty in that country. Do I need to go on? Africa, you should be taking refugees from the country of Africa because you are continuing to put war in that country that is destabilizing these economies, that is destabilizing these countries, countries that you have no fucking business being in. Do I need to go on? Search could Twitter, and there are also a lot of allegations from current and former staffers of unethical practices under PG management, including toning down stories and pulling images that contain photographs of black people. One of the allegations that Burris uh, softened the story is from Colcom Foundation, a Pittsburgh foundation started by white nationalists that donates millions of dollars to anti-immigrant groups. According to former PG staffer, Burris ordered quotes removed from the story where the Southern Poverty Law Center comments... Uh, about benefactors of Colcom's money. Two of the biggest benefactors, uh, the Federation of Immigration Reform and the Center of Immigra Immigration Studies have been deemed hate groups by the SPLC and have been accused of white nationalism. FAIR subsequently shared the, uh, the PG story on social media uh, uh, to thank Colcom for its work. In April, SPLC obtained emails 
that showed two Trump staffers who wrote his latest immigration order halting green cards have both have ties to FAIR and CIS. In Burr's piece this morning, he posed the question about pulling Johnson from the cover. Did we fail to appreciate what the new civil rights movement means to a young black woman? Yes, you did. Address this in the video. Did we miss the larger context of what's happening in our country right now? Yes, you definitely did. Address that in the video. Uh, as we attempted a teaching moment with a young reporter, did we miss what could have been a teaching? Uh, what could have been our own teaching moment? Yes, you did. Address that in the video as well. The answer to all these questions is clear, clearly yes. Oh, I'm validated. I'm validated. But then Burris followed up with, uh, but no fair person could make a case that our actions were race-based. Hmm. Hmm. Except when we look at the evidence coming out of the PG newsroom. Uh, so it is not biased. So... It's not biased for a newspaper publisher and executive editors to fraternize with a Republican presidential candidate who later becomes president of the United States and to apply conservative bias into editorial decisions that defend that politician and views that align with him. Just as it's not biased to pull a black reporter off protest coverage for a tweet while not doing the same thing for a white reporter. But it is biased for a reporter to tweet a photo about trash in a parking lot and make a joke about looters. Got it. Yeah. So uh, it's a little follow up situation uh, from our video on Friday uh, where we talked about uh, what, what, you know, the subject of, of uh, censorship. Uh, why is this important? I address this uh, on Friday. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it again because it, it is worth repeating. Um, journalists being censored is a major fucking problem because it means that you are not getting all sides of the story. This black reporter should be out there covering protests. One of the things he said was, oh, well, she's a social media reporter. What does that, one, what does that mean? And two, why does that matter? If she wants to advance in her career and be a protest journalist, then let her fucking be a protest journalist, especially during the time of a brand new civil rights movement that's, that's blowing up in this country. Like, are you serious? This is on a local level. We just talked about how it, on a national level this is happening and on an international level this is happening with the Gray Zone, Mint Press News, Telesur, WikiLeaks. Those are international censorship stories. This is a local censorship stories. Once again, all of this shit happens on all levels. And if we don't pay attention to it on all levels, when there's a censorship story in the small scale, you know, then people can dismiss the large scale ones. And if we only concentrate on the large scale ones, then we allow it to happen in the small scale ones. It's important to talk about this stuff. I'm not saying that, hey, this conservative guy shouldn't have his voice out there. He should, and he gets to. Uh, clearly, he gets to make the decisions on on what voices are even out there. And that is the incorrect. If you're if you if you do have journalistic integrity, then you should show the accurate story. Fine, show the stories of the protest and show the story of what the cops are saying. People will make their decision based on what, what they know to be the truth. That's journalistic integrity. But telling people what they need to know, telling people what is and isn't, shifting the story, changing the narrative, that's not journalism. That's you being a biased dickhole. And it's important. It's important to cover this stuff. The censorship on the on the ground floor is the same thing as the censorship on the on the international scale. So this guy should uh, not be the executive editor of the Post Gazette. The Post Gazette needs to probably print up a bunch of fucking retractions. Um, I mentioned this on Friday. I have been trying to get a hold of Ashley and talk to her about her side of the story as well, because clearly this guy is, is just blasting his side of the story. Uh, there is a newspaper that's covering it, but I want to talk to Ashley and, 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 you know, so I'm, I'm trying to get, but she's got a lot going on right now. So when things cool off, she'll, you know, and if she has time, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we can make that happen. Um, but uh, yeah, let's check your comments. 
Uh, that's why racists hate live streams. Racists are super touchy lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No kidding, right? Is uh, there? There's a lot of dog whistles going around, and uh, and and they just uh, they, like what you know. Like all they need to do is listen to some people. Like we're listening to you. We've sp we've been listening to you, motherfucker. Like we've we've listened to you and we've countered all your arguments and we've you know said this that and the other and uh you're not you're not returning that there's no reciprocity you just get to continue to say well it's not reason i love how racists use that term too reason right so it's ta it's taken like the skeptic and free thinking community into this thing of like oh if you call yourself a skeptic or a free thinker you must be a crazy racist conspiracy theorist that hates all black people it's like no we're not we're we're looking at the objective story in place sometimes the left fails sometimes the right fails sometimes the center fails right like we have to if you want true objectivism you don't take money from the fucking CIA you don't you don't uh, print stories that only benefit one political side of the argument there's times where I know I've, I've said like, Hey, I know this guy's a conservative, but brings up a valued point. Like I, I know I've done that before because when he, when, when they do, they do when they don't, they don't, you know, I, my point, my side is always what's, what's best for the people. What's going to help the people get, you know, um, improve their lives and, and live the best lives that they can. That's what that's, that's my perspective. That's my point of view. But like we talked about earlier, you know, from the Chappelle special is people trust comedians, people trust people in entertainment, people trust other artists because they are, they are for the people and they're of the people. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not fucking rich. I'm, in, you know, living in my parents' fucking apartment right now, uh, thinking about how I'm going to pay off my, uh, pay my car payment next month. And, uh, I don't have an answer, but I'll, but I'll figure it out. You know, I bet everybody else is going through the same thing. Everybody else is going through that same shit. Uh, and that's why people trust comedians and, and musicians and other artists, because we are of the people. We can't trust these journalists because they're not of us. You think fucking executive editor of the, uh, uh, the, the, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette is, is of us? Fuck no. Fuck no. That dude makes way fucking more money than me or anybody else. Not not to say that people don't, but that dude's like a fucking you know multimillionaire. Nancy Pelosi isn't one of us. She's a multimillionaire. She has two fridges. How many people do you know have two fridges? It's crazy pants. She lives in a fucking mansion. The reason why people trust artists is because we are up the people. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit that like button. You shared around with some friends, maybe with some enemies, you know, people that you really think would enjoy uh, video content like this. And make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that bell to get notifications when I put up more videos. Uh, there are going to be a ton of videos coming out on this channel. I release a few videos every single week. I do a couple segments called Forkful of Noodles, where we talk about ideas, history, philosophy. I do more ranty videos. Uh, called Road Reflections, where I talk about news stories, current events, uh, that sort of stuff. And then The Dispatch, which is uh, which are also current event written news, and they are a portion of my uh, audio interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk. So if you enjoy those sort of things, this is the channel for you. Plus, there'll be some, some stand-up footage that I will be putting up as well. So there is regular content that goes up. Uh, and uh, if you want some alternative independent, socially conscious, radical comedy. This is the channel for you to be. I mean, I, I don't know why you haven't hit the subscribe button already. I feel like you should have hit it maybe six or seven times at this point. Uh, so so if you enjoy that sort of stuff, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.